is a new week of the poses in the back of the book of light and yoga. We've worked up to week 14 and week 15. And a lot of new things happen in week 14 and week 15. It still has all the basic standing poses that we've been doing, though we're, we're going to focus more on the stuff that's new. But if you were to do the whole sequence, it would add these things to the basic standing poses we've been working on. Okay, so the first thing that happens in week 14 that's of interest is that Mr. Angar finally introduces headstand into the sequences. And interestingly, he puts it at the very beginning of class. Um, my own net doesn't really like to do headstand right off, so we're going to do a few things uh, to prepare the neck, but to do a short headstand at the beginning of class. But it is nice doing headstand early on in a class or in a practice because it really gives you, or at least I find that it gives me a kind of an additional mental clarity and focus for the rest of the practice rather than doing it more when I'm at the end and kind of tired from the yoga. Um, but both are fine, but both work as a way of sequencing. Uh, the next uh, big thing that gets added in are some of the belly down back things. Okay, so we're going to do uh, the ones he has, Shalabhasana, uh, which is locust pose, Makarasana, which is crocodile pose, Dhanurasana, which is bow pose, and then um, Bhujangasana, cobra pose. So we're going to focus primarily our practice on that. Then the third element of things that happens this week is he adds some more shoulder stand variations, moving beyond Karnapidasana out to Supta Konasana with your feet out wide, and then Parjvahalasana, where you walk your legs from side to side while you're in plow pose. Uh, then the last thing is, as if all of that is not enough, <laughs> then the last or the fourth thing that he adds is after you come out of the Sarvangasana, is he has us do a three full seated forward bends. So <clears throat> in that, that's a lot of new stuff to learn and unpack. I'm gonna really, like I said, mostly focus on the new stuff rather than the standing post focus that we've been working on for a while. Okay. All right, so sit up straight and tall. Go ahead and be, you can be in either Virasana or Swastikasana or Supasana, whatever works for you. Okay. I'm in Swastikasana right now, so I've got the soles of my feet. I'm going to turn them up toward the ceiling, so I give a little bit more on the top of my foot. Then I use my hands to move the calf flesh up toward the ceiling, and then I turn my thighs from the inside out. If you're in Sukhasana, very similar with your feet flexed in, in a, what do you call it? If you're in Virasana, it's more of an internal rotation of the legs. Okay? But regardless of which way you're sitting, press the tops of the feet down into the floor and energetically lift your ankles up. And you should feel some firmness come into the hips and a little bit of a lift come all the way up into the chest. Yeah? And stretch your arms out at your sides and rotate your shoulder bones in the socket so you feel the collarbones get a little bit broader. Then fold your palms together to your heart and close your eyes. Use your thumbs to lift the sternum up and use your forearms to lift the rib cage up. And hopefully those two actions, you should feel your trapezius muscles release a bit away from the neck. And then inhale, move the breath up into the chest. Keep that nice lift of the chest. And as you exhale, move the prana, the energy of the breath outward towards your side ribs and armpits. Inhale, make yourself tall. Keep that height. Exhale, make yourself broad. Inhale, extend yourself. Exhale, expand yourself. Use that breath to create an inner sense of spaciousness within. And then turn your awareness to the exhalation and use the exhalation like it's a pathway or a road or a thread that you can follow from the outer world toward the inner world, that inner landscape of you, the domain of yoga. Use your exhalations to take your awareness there. And from that still place within, let's chant three ohms together. Oh. 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 Yopa karotam pravaram aninam Patan jalim ranjali nana kushmi Baba ki pusha karam Sampatika satariam Sahasha sivatam sevam Namami
Thank you for singing the whole chant for us. And keep your chest well lifted and broad and bring your chin down to your chest and your hands down to your thighs with your palms up. And then raise your head and open your eyes. All right, stretch your arms out in front of you. Interlace your fingers. Notice which finger you've got on top. And, and then turn your palms toward the front of the room. I think we did this last, um, last week, but it's something I've been working on some lately. When I normally flip my palms, my elbows bend a fair bit, and I do that. And you know, I get some nice opening in the, in, the, in the fingers and everything, but see if you can, as you turn those palms down, keep the elbows straight and turn the thumbs down toward the floor and even toward the screen. And I've been finding these past two or three weeks when I try to do it with my arms straight, I actually get more of a release of the tension in the inside part of my forearm and also on the thumb and the first finger side of my hand. I lose a little bit of the grip on the pinky side of the hand, but I think the extra stretch where the tight part of my wrist and uh, forearm are is actually worth it. All right, then reach your arms all the way up above your head. Press your feet down into the floor and energetically lift the ankles up. Continue that lift all the way up through the side ribs. Stretch your arms all the way up toward the ceiling. Pull your pinkies back so they go more toward the floor. Then inhale your breath up into the chest. And then exhale, bring your chin down to your chest. Then reach the arms up more, back more, up more, back more. And then raise your head back up. Keep all the length that you can in the sides of the torso. And then keep your fingers interlaced, but just bring them back behind your head like you're getting ready to do a headstand because we are in a not too long period of time. Then use your hands on your back of your skull and lift up a little bit. This actually comes more and to play when we do Makarasana, where the hands are in the same position. Leanne, bring your elbows a little bit closer together. All right, notice which finger you've got on top. Release your hands from headstand and switch the grip of your hands so that the other hand goes on top. Stretch your arms out. Keep your arms as straight as you can and then turn the thumbs and the first finger down toward the floor and then even toward the screen. Restraighten the arms and reach your arms all the way up above your head. And start at the base and press the feet down and energetically lift the ankles up. Lengthen up through the side ribs so much that you can really feel this abdomen beginning to drop in and up. Stretch up through your arms. Take a nice big inhalation so your chest gets nice and well lifted and bring your chin down to your chest. Then reach your arms up, back, up, back. Then raise the head up and interlace your fingers the opposite way than you did the first time for Shir Shasana. And so so you can, there, there's a tendency to turn the elbows out wide here, but bring them in like you're going to do sheer shasana. Yeah. I don't want them to be too close, but and then you can raise them up, you know, but like sheer shasana, right? The forearms would be level with the top of the head, right? Sheer shasana's headstand. So you can adjust your arms so that they are in that, that dimension. Yeah. And then release your hands out of the way. And then stretch your legs out into dandasana, stack pose. Join your big toes together and spread your other toes wide apart. Okay, those two actions should help you engage some of your legs, even a little, your leg muscles a little bit, but you can lift your own quadriceps, lift the inner thighs, and thinking ahead to the back bends, turn the middle from the middle of the thigh, internally rotate the legs, okay, and extend from the inner knee through the inner heel. So base, this is real, and now point your feet a little bit more than you might for Dandasana. And not all the way super pointed, but let's say pointed, or how they would be in sheer shasana, because that's also how they're going to be in a lot of the belly down back bends. So really suck your outer hips in, squeeze your legs together, feel that lift that comes into the chest, and then stretch your arms back, the hands back, back a little bit behind your hips. Spread your palms well. All right. Then switch the grip of your uh, switch the cross of your legs, because I don't think you've done that up yet. <laughs> Make whatever adjustments with your feet with your calves, with your thighs that you would like to. Press the tops of the feet down, lengthen up through your side ribs again here, stretch your arms out in front of you. This time, hook one thumb over the other thumb. Pull your thumbs against each other, stretch through your ring fingers, and then reach your arms all the way up behind you, feeling that nice opening in the armpits and more movement of the shoulder blades into the back. Keep pulling your thumbs against each other as you reach your fingers all the way up toward the ceiling. And then release your hands down, keeping the length in the side ribs. Switch the grip of your fingers. Pull your fingers against each other as you reach your arms all the way up. 
Keep pulling your fingers against each other and stretch up through the ring fingers. Make yourself as tall as you can. Keep the trapezius releasing away from the neck. And then release your hands down. Stretch the legs out again into Dandasana. Join your big toes together. Spread your other toes wide apart. From the little toe side of the foot, you draw up into the outer hip and then make your legs be as strong and firm as you can. When we're gonna be in the belly down back bend in a second, I'm gonna say, lift your knees up off the floor okay? and, that, and, and you'll press the tops of the feet down into the floor. But here your knees are gonna be more pressed down toward the floor. Right? So it's a little different just from the orientation. All right, then add your arms, push down with your palms and really get that nice lift up into the armpits. And here too, in the shoulder blades and the chest, you've got some backward bending actions getting established, right? Your shoulder blades move in, away from the neck and into the center of the body and up a little bit. And basically we're just gonna continue all of that work when we get to the belly down back bends in just a little while. All right, then bend your knees, come onto your hands and your knees. And this is just some preparatory work to before we do a shir shasana. So spread your palms well. Turn your biceps toward the front of your mat. Look forward and you'll feel your thoracic spine come in and then press again through the thumb and first finger side of your hand. Turn your toes under and push back into Ottoman Vishwanasana, downward facing dog. And just let your head hang. Feel the openness in the sides of the armpits and how the thoracic spine begins to come in. All right, then bend your knees and come down. Put your elbows right underneath your shoulders. This is called headless headstand prep. And you're gonna interlace your fingers and extend from the elbows through the wrist bones and put your whole forearm on the floor. And press the forearms down, lift the shoulders up. And first you can push back into more where your, your torso would be in the position of downward facing dog, which would mean that your shoulders are kind of um, are back behind the elbows. So that's not really headstand prep, though it does get more opening in the armpit. So to make it be more like a headstand, walk your feet in so that your shoulders are right over your wrist, uh, elbows. Press those forearms down and really lift the shoulders up and just let your head hang. And then walk back out, bend your knees. Then notice which finger you've got on top. We're gonna to do it again with the opposite finger interlace. Interlace your fingers the opposite way. Extend from the elbows through the wrist bones. Press those forearms down. Lift the shoulders up. You can push back into a dolphin if you want first. And then you need to walk in so that your shoulders are right over your elbows like they would be for sure shasana, headstand. All right, and then walk back out. Take a little rest. Put your hands down on the floor again for downward facing dog. And then push back into downward facing dog. And see if this downward facing dog has a little bit more openness in the sides of the armpits and the sides of the thoracic spine, the thoracic spine opening. And walk forward till your feet are right underneath your hips. Place your hands on your pelvic bones. Roll your shoulder bones back and come all the way up. Good job. Okay, so now we're gonna do a sheer shots and a headstand. And if, you are, if you are someone who doesn't do headstand, you just repeat that headless headstand prep, okay? All right, the rest of us, we're gonna do headstand. You can do it in the middle of the room. I just realized I didn't spotlight myself, sorry. or you can take the support of the wall. Other options that you could do are just regular downward facing dog. Okay. You could also do, uh, this is called Uttanasana, standing forward then, where you can just fold forward down and let your head hang, okay? So those are some options if you aren't someone who practices Shir Shasana. Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna be here at the wall, partly because it's a good angle for me to see you at, maybe not all the way at the wall, but you're gonna interlace your fingers, just like we did in headless headstand prep. Put your head on the floor, and the back of the head goes into the hands, and you walk in, and if you can go up two legs at a time, great. If you can't, it's okay, you can come up one leg at a time. 
Now, those of you who are doing something besides headstand, you want to make sure you come down and rest and go back into the pose that you're doing because most of the preps actually take more energy than actually doing the actual headstand. I've mentioned in most of these classes that, you know, 14 weeks of doing lots and lots of standing poses, and then Mr. Hangar puts in Shir Shasana. Yeah, so all of that work is basically preparatory for headstand. But here we are in headstand. Press your forearms down, lift the shoulders up, turn the inner thighs in, and lift your buttocks toward your heels, and then extend from the inner knee through the inner heel. And actually, now that I think about it, as you're here, your legs are also doing the same thing in headstand that they would be doing in our belly down back bend, if we're getting ready to do some of. All right, so go ahead and keep your shoulders well lifted. And then if you can bring your legs down, two legs at a time, do so. But if you can't, yeah, it's okay. You just can come down one leg at a time. And then you can either rest in downward facing child's pose, okay? or you can come back into a downward facing dog and just let your head hang a little bit more. And then go ahead and come all the way up or down as the case may be. That wasn't a super long headstand. Does that move your feet a little bit further back? Yeah, so you get a little bit more length in the spine. But just stand here in Tadasana and see if you can feel. Now, usually we do it toward the end of class. Lately I've been doing it toward the end of class. But see if you have this your Shirshasana. How do you feel post Shirshasana? Okay. Like I mentioned, for me, it's really kind of clarifying of the brain. I just feel like I'm a little bit more mentally focused and energized uh, to take on the practice. Like your t-shirt, darling, by the way. <laughs> All right, stretch the ring fingers. And so now we're gonna work on some belly down back ones. The first one is uh, Chalabhasana. Okay. So you're gonna turn, move your arms back behind you. So we're just going to practice it like we're standing up. So your arms are going to go back behind you. But as you do that, you want to, it's not just the arms moving back because you don't want your shoulders to go forward. You want your shoulders to go back. And keeping your shoulders back, move your arms just a little bit back behind your torso. And then you can turn, having done that, then you can turn your palms up toward the ceiling or you can keep them facing toward each other. And each of those just has a slightly different effect on the opening of the shoulder blades. But feel how when you've moved the arms like, like this, how much broadness there is in the collarbones. Now just come up onto the balls of the feet. So you're just doing a standing Shalabhasana. All right, and then release and come down. Now you're gonna lie down on the floor. Oh, you can see me, it's fine. Okay, all right. So just be up on your forearms for a second. We're gonna work a little bit with the actions of the legs. Okay. So turn your right thigh in, extend through all 10 toes, and then put your right leg down on the floor. Okay. Then do the same thing with the other legs. And your knees are probably at this point a little bit bent. Okay. Have your feet pretty close together. They don't have to all the way touch right at first. Now push your feet down into the floor and lift the knees up off the floor, and then really engage your hamstrings and your buttocks. Right? So that, that's the action of the legs. And then in Shalabhasana, we're also gonna lift the legs up off the floor, okay? So keep your leg action strong. Place your hands by your sides to begin with. Push your hands down into the floor and roll the shoulders back. Lift your chest, sorry, lift your head up off the floor. Move your hands back behind you. Really pull those shoulder blades in and then lift your legs up off the floor. Shalabhasana. Again, you can have your palms facing toward the ceiling or you can have them facing toward each other. And each one of them just has a slightly different effect on the shoulder blade coming in. Then come down and rest. Turn your toes under and push back into Adhavakishwanasana, downward facing dog.
And then bend your, bend your knees and come down, back onto the floor, and get a belt. Okay, with your belt, that looks good, Susa. We're gonna make the legs uh, stay straight together. Chalabhasana is a locust. So it helps to keep the legs straight together to belt the legs. So I'm gonna take a belt and it's just on the thick part of my calf. And join the toes. Then you still have to work your legs, okay? So that's what we're doing here. Then with your legs belted, go ahead and swing around so that you're on your belly. And do your same leg actions. Your thighs have to turn in. Press the feet down and practice lifting the knees up off the ground so the legs get super, super straight. Then reach your arms back behind you. Roll the shoulders back and that'll help you start lifting the chest. Move the shoulder blades in, away from the neck and into the center of the body and up a little bit, then add your legs. Notice see how much easier it is <laughs> to lift the legs and keep them together when you have just that little support of the strap. And just see if you can lift the legs and lift the chest just a little bit higher and then roll yourself down and come all the way down and rest. All right, that's called Shalabhasana and the arms are back behind the body. The next one, like I said, you can either do one or the other, is called Makarasana. Yeah. And in Makarasana, I'm gonna so you can leave your legs belted, but in Makarasana, the elbows really are like they're in headstand. Yeah. Now you can start with them out wide and then swoop them together toward headstand, and that'll actually help you get a little bit more of a back bend in your back, okay? But don't keep them out wide. If you want to start out wide, that's fine. But at some point, you have to bring them in yeah, and lift the elbows up a little bit more. All right, ready? So lie back down on the floor. You've still got your strap. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Press your feet down and lift the knees up. Feel your hamstrings and buttocks working. And then lift your arms up off the floor. This is harder to do than, than Shalabhasana. And pull your elbows in a little bit more and lift up a little bit higher and then come down and rest. Then switch the grip of your fingers. Press the feet down and lift the knees up. Feel your hamstrings and buttocks working. Lift the legs up, lift the torso up. Pull on the head a little bit with your hands and extend from the armpits through the elbows and release and come down. Take that strap off. Bend your knees and then come into another downward facing dog. I'll move your shamasana. And maybe this downward facing dog feels a little bit different. I can feel my heels are more grounded. My armpits are more open. My thoracic spine is moving in a little bit more. And walk forward till your feet are right underneath your hips. Place your hands on your pelvic bones. Roll your shoulder bones back and come all the way up. Yeah. All right, so we did a standing Shalabhasana. We did Makarasana already with headstand. Yeah. The third belly down back bend yeah, is Dhanurasana, okay, bow pose. Yeah. So we're gonna practice those actions standing up first. Yeah. So you might wanna hold on to the wall because you're gonna lift one leg up. Okay. So lift, bend, up your, bend up your left leg. Okay. Then once you've bent up your left leg, flex your foot. And when you flex your foot, you should feel the hamstrings and the buttocks move toward each other. Then keeping your hamstrings and buttocks moving toward each other, kick your foot back behind you. And then see if you can get, well, actually you should have done this first. Get your foot, ankle, keep your foot flexed first and pull back with your hands and your legs and point your foot and pull your leg up a little bit and then release and come out of the pose. 
All righty. A lot of you are freezing for me, so just a second. Try, try something. I'm back. All right. I'm actually, well, first of all, I'm going to try and clean my limbs and see if that helps you unfreeze. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't want to leave the meeting, but here we are. I do want to kind of refresh things. So let's see. I can assign someone to be the host. Maybe I'll make Vicky the host. Yes. And I'm going to leave the meeting and come back in. If this was April 1, we could all leave and see what Ann would do. <laughs> <laughs> Right on the end. <laughs> disappeared. Hey, everyone get out of the picture. <laughs> yeah, do that. <laughs> if you can, we're going to get out. Oh, there she is. <laughs> uh, uh, Did she come? I thought she came back. I came back. Oh, everyone was fine on this. <laughs> everyone was frozen, so I had to leave. And come back in. Okay, so let's start again at Danya Rasana standing bow prep and okay. we'll see how that goes. Okay, all right. So <laughs> first, you're gonna bend your leg up behind you, okay. and then just flex your foot very strongly. And what just that action of flexing the foot helps you engage your hamstrings and your buttocks. Then take hold of your ankle with your hand. And now what you're gonna do is kick your foot back behind you and you can tip forward a little bit. Keep your foot flexed at first and pull back with your hand and kick back with your shaft. Then point your foot, lean a little bit more forward and now pull your leg up toward the ceiling with both the muscles of the leg and also the muscles of your hand. So they're kind of two different, let's say stages of working with the feet in Danyarasana. And then bring that leg down. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay. So bend your leg up, flex your foot, and just in that flexing of the foot, hopefully you're gonna feel your hamstrings and your buttocks engage. Okay. Then get your ankle, pull the leg back, kick back with your leg, but also pull back with your arm, and you can lean a little bit forward, or a lot forward, depending on your capacity. Then point your foot, and then point the toe and the leg up toward the ceiling. And you may need to lean a little bit further forward. All right, and then bring that leg down. All right, now we're gonna do that same work, but lying down on the floor. All right, All right so come down onto the floor again. Then bend your legs up, flex your feet, and you'll feel your hamstrings and buttocks engage very nicely. Then you can use your hands to push up a little bit, but then reach back and get your ankles. Hopefully you can get your ankles the top of the foot. I, your legs right now are not at a 90 degree angle to get them, but flex your feet again. And when you do that, you should feel how much your chest lifts and your shoulder blades come on the back. Then kick back with your feet and you'll feel yourself come even more into a bow. Okay. Then point your toes and pull with your arms and your legs and lift yourself up even higher and feel your thoracic spine come in. And then release, put your fingers underneath you. Push back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now we're facing dog and just letting the back of your body release and come down.
All righty, let's try that one more time. Okay, so lie down on the floor. Turn your thighs in. Bend your legs up. Reach back and get your ankles. Flex your feet and you'll feel your torso pull up. Point and then lift your legs up. Point your left feet and lift up even higher. Really feel that nice thoracic spine move in and release down and come back into downward facing dog. Feel hopefully how each downward facing dog makes your thoracic spine move in a little bit more. And then walk forward till your feet are right underneath your hips. Place your hands on your pelvic bones. Roll your shoulder bones back and come all the way up. Will someone pop on and tell me if you can see me or hear me or oh. think? I can yes, see you. Yes. Yeah. You can? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I can't really see y'all, okay? <laughs> uh, most of your videos are out for me huh. and also some of you are frozen okay i'm gonna proceed okay. yeah. <laughs> but know that i can't see you right now okay <laughs> i'm gonna try uh making vicky host one more time and try and coming back in but if it keeps on we'll proceed into the bujangasana okay Okay. Here we go. We're going to try one more time. We probably shouldn't hide from her now. I suspect she's a little stressed about the glitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, great. Welcome back. Thank you for suffering through the technical difficulties. Okay, so those are the three, three of the four belly down back bends. Okay, so just to re review them and a couple things about them before we do the last one, which is Bhujangasana. Yeah. Uh, my teacher, Lori, says for her, they're kind of two main backward bending categories. One of them she sees as the hands behind the back back bends, right? like Dhanurasana we just did, like Shalabhasana that we just did. Yeah. And then her other main category is when the hands are above the head, or you could say in front of the body, like, and we're getting ready to do cobra pose. So we did one behind the back, then we did one with the hands above the head, right? Then we did Dhanurasana, another one behind the back. And now the last one Mr. Iyengar is gonna do is Bhujangasana, where you push down with your hands and you lift your chest up, okay? But the legs stay on the floor for that one, okay? Uh, so that's one, let's say, big category of backward bends, okay? Another category of backward bends that I think about a lot is when either your arms are straight, okay, or your arms are bent, okay? So like think about pushing up into Urdhva Dhanurasana, okay? Your arms are stretching up above your head straight. Okay? But if you're in like a dwipada vibrita dandasana, your hands are interlaced and your elbows come in a little bit closer. Right? So, so they're both they're both there. And well, bhujangasana, you start off with the elbows bent, but then you straighten your arms eventually in the full stage of the pose. All right, so go, let's do the fourth belly down back then. So lie down on the floor. Okay. Turn your thighs in, suck your outer ankles in, the legs stay together in this one too, but they're not gonna leave the floor. But even though they're not leaving the floor, they still have to work just as hard. So press your feet down and lift your knees up off the floor and really move those, lift up through the inner thighs and through the quadriceps. Then start off with your fingers right underneath your shoulders. Push down with your hands and a little bit forward and that'll help you begin to coil your back. If that goes well, okay, checking back in at your legs, you can come down, move your hands a little bit further back 
And you froze. She'll probably log out and come back on, but let's go ahead and do Bhujangasana, okay? Yeah. So as she was saying, hands a little bit further back, unless you've got tight, tight shoulders. Roll the sholdders back, trapezius muscles down toward the buttocks, engage the feet and coil up. Keep rolling the shoulders back. That's the big challenge here. Legs straight, press the tops of the feet down, and roll the shoulders back as you come up as much as possible. But in this one, the pelvis does stay on the ground. The pelvis stays on the ground. One more breath. And all the way down. Take a breath. We're waiting for Anne. Let's do that again. So re-engage the legs. Press the feet down. Extend through the big toes. Roll the shoulders back and lift, lift. Very nice. Hi, we're doing another one. <laughs> All right, good job. All right, yes, Kevin. You know. <laughs> Kevin's a downward facing dog again. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> takes a village. <laughs> A global village. Okay, downward facing dogs look really good. Walk forward till your feet are right underneath your hips. Place your hands on your pelvic bones. Roll your shoulder bones back and come all the way up. All right. Okay, so that's that's the second big new thing. First one was shoulder stand. The next one was the belly down back bends. Okay. The third big new thing is adding in some inversion variations, right? So and some new ones. Okay? So we've got Karnapidasana, which we've already been working on. So let's do half happy baby and full happy baby is kind of a preparation for getting toward Karnapidasana. And it'll also feel nice on the back after the back. Okay. So lie down on your back again. Lie down on your back this time, okay, rather than on your abdomen. Then bend up your right leg. Now here's your vertical shin. You can move the leg out to the side of the torso. And there are some, you can work with the foot flexed. That opens the hip in one way. And then when you point the foot, it's much more like Karnapidasana. Karnapidasana means the ear pressure pose. And you just pull the toes down toward the seat, toward the foot forward and the knee down toward the floor. Then just do a little bit of a sit up, right? And then turn your torso a little bit away from your leg. And then release the leg down. Then the other leg up, move the leg off to the side so it clears your torso, but not super far out wide. And try to pull the leg down with its own steam first. Then you can use your hand to pull things down and then you can point your toe. And then pull the leg down a little bit more. All right, and then, oh, I forgot to do the sit up. And then do the sit up. So it's like, here, there you go, good. All right. This is a very bizarre teaching modality for me right now. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, now, I'm just gonna say what I'm doing. Hopefully I say on the screen, people are doing totally, everyone's screen is like doing something slightly different. All right, so bend both of your legs up. Point your feet, do a sit up, and pull with your hands on your ankles, and then bring both of the knees down on either side of your leg. There you go. Good. All right. So that is preparation for Karnapidasana. Then roll to your side and sit up. Okay. So let's do it. It'll be. Shoulder stand, plow pose, then Karnapidasana. Okay. Then he adds in Supta Konasana. Okay. So sit in Upavishta Konasana, seated wide angle pose. Spread your toes. Draw up from the little toe side of the foot into the outer hips. 
Engage your quadriceps well. Yeah. Lengthen up through your side ribs and just put your hands back behind you for now. Lift your chest up and then just bring your chin down to your chest like you're doing, you do a Jalandara Bandha. And this is the next thing he has, right? Okay. Then raise your head up. Then, then, then bring your legs back to Dandasana, which is you know, like plow pose. Yeah. But then he adds a Parjvahalasana, which means you take your legs over to the side. Now, when you're when you're in shoulder stand doing this, your your neck and your shoulders will stay the same, and you just move the legs to the abdomen. So we're going to do that here too. Can you walk your let keep your torso where it is, but walk your legs way 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 over to the right? Yeah. And then as you do that, then your abdomen moves from right to left. Your front ribs move from right to left. You keep the collarbones broad and there's the corresponding movement on the back body. All right, and then lift your chest well and swing the legs back to Dandasana. The Dandasana again is just like plow pose, particularly if you have the chin down toward the chest. Then lift your head up, walk your legs way, way, way over to the opposite leg but keep your torso going straight ahead and the legs extend off to one side, but your abdomen turns away from the leg. So the legs are at the left for me now. So my abdomen moves from left to right. My front ribs move from left to right. But in terms of the back body, there's a movement from right to left of the lower back, the middle back and the upper back, right? So this, you could say this is seated part of the halasana. Yeah. Then come back to halasana. Then you would go back, then, then it takes us back up to Sarvangasana, which after all that Halasana work, you're gonna really feel a nice, open, long Sarvangasana shoulder stand. Okay. And then the last one is the one we've been doing for the past two or three weeks, which is Ekapada Sarvangasana. Okay. So bring your right, lay down on the floor, bring your right leg up, put the strap on the ball of the foot, and there are various stages to this, right? You can, you, when we're upside down, just imagine that you're upside down. The bottom leg here that's on the floor is like the top leg. Okay. So it would be reaching and extending up toward the ceiling. You'll bring your hat leg halfway down, level the hips, and then you move your leg all the way down toward the floor. The so front of that back body, pull the leg more and more toward your torso. Then release the foot, lower it down like you were doing a half urgent prasarta padasana. Then do the same thing with the other leg. Keep extending through your right leg as you lift your left leg up. Put the strap on the heel arch connection. Establish the 90 degrees first. Get your leg a little bit straighter if you can by imagining that it's still doing those belly down back things. All right, remember how you lifted the knees off the floor? Do that same action here to get your legs straighter and then do even more of that as you extend from your back body all the way pulling the leg all the way down. All right, and then lower your leg all the way down. All right, now we're gonna do a version of Chachush Padasana where you interlace your fingers underneath your buttocks as a preparation for shoulder stand. Then we're gonna go ahead and go in and do all of that shoulder stand stuff. And then we just got those, then we add the seated forward bends. Okay, so bend your knees up. Tuck your shoulders underneath you here. Push your feet down and lift your buttocks up high so you feel that same hamstring buttock connection. This is really just like upside down Dhanurasana, right? Then if you can interlace your fingers underneath your buttocks, do so. If you can't, you can hold on to a strap. Then Push the feet down and move the shins toward the, the shoulder blades and feel the chest open. Then with your arms straight, when we practice the beginning of class, can you turn your thumbs down toward the floor and you'll feel your outer shoulder blades just come in a little bit more. Then turn your fingers back, release your hands and lower yourself all the way down. And then we're going to do the same thing with the opposite finger interlace. Right? So press your feet down and lift your buttocks up high. Feel the hamstrings and the buttocks engaging. Interlace your fingers the opposite interlace. Push your arms down and feel a nice lift coming to the chest. 
Move your shins toward your shoulder blades and you'll feel even more lift coming into the chest. And then keeping your arms straight here, can you turn your thumbs to go down toward the floor or even to the heels and feel those shoulder blades coming into the body? And release down, lower your buttocks down, bend your knees, and then set up for your shoulder stand. Yep. Oh, okay. And if you don't do shoulder stand, I think most of you do, but if you don't, you can repeat all of those poses that we did for the variations. And you can do a tachibanda off of a bolster. Okay. Or you can do legs up the wall pose. Oh, but make your setup. I like to use a chair for Halasana at first. I have my chair here, though I'm going to get it out of the way later. Okay, so remember, and also in case I, in case I get kicked out again, <laughs> you're gonna come up into shoulder stand. Do a few minutes of shoulder stand. Then you're gonna come down into plow pose. Then from plow pose, you're gonna do karnapidasana. And after karnapidasana, you're gonna straighten the legs again and do supta Then you're gonna try parjvahalasana. And then after that, to each side, you're going to come back up to Sarvangasana, then do an Ekapada Sarvangasana. Okay, I'm going to do all that with you, but that's just the plan in case someone else like Vicky needs to take it. Yeah. All right. All right, so I'm continuing to practice that rolling up into shoulder stand from an extension of or first arm of Tadasana. Now, when I do it that way, I don't really get all the way up to the tops of my shoulders. So that's where my chair comes in. I put my feet on the chair. And that Kapalasana just gives me a little bit more freedom to get on the very tops of my shoulders. It helps me work and press the legs, a little bit less pressure on the neck. That was for a minute. And then I put my strap on, put my hands on my back, and swing both legs up into the side of that. Now that's my approach. Okay? You might or might not be with me in terms of the pacing. So go to the base, make sure you're pressing your forearms down, lifting your shoulders up, engage those hamstrings and buttocks, and lift up through the inner feet. Okay, so the legs really are doing all they were doing in the straight leg back with baby work. Take stock of this shoulder stand because I really want you to feel how nice the shoulder stand is going to feel again after we do our uh, little flat pose variations. Again, like you were lowering your legs down in Urdhva Prasarta Padasana, lower your legs down. If you can make it all the way to the floor, great. If you can't, you can raise the floor. So that's plow. And there are positions in plow too. And you can do the thumb turning interlaced and plow pose also. But really feel how much longer you get in the back body in plow pose and walk your feet a little further away from your head. And when you bend your knees for Karnapiyasana, that gives you even more length in the back body. And you can do the thumb and release work here too. So when you do that, your arms move away to get the butt of the bend, and your knees move down to the floor. Then put your hands back on your back, straighten your legs back to plow pose, 
Balasana. Then walk your legs out wide or Supta Kanasana. Make your legs be as straight and strong as they would be for a standing pose. Then swing your left leg over to meet your right leg. And walk both feet a little bit more over to the right. But even if your abdomen from right to left, ribs from right to left, and keep your collarbones broad. Then swing back to Sutta Kanasana. And then swing your right leg over to meet your left. Wiggle both legs a little bit more over to the left. So your abdomen moves from left to right. Front ribs move from left to right. And keep your collarbones as broad as you can. Now, come back to plow pose. And then back up to Sarvangasana. And now after having done those, let's say, compressing, well, not compressing is a long way, but they're, they're closed in kinds of things. Right? And there is some abdominal work of drawing the abdomen in. So don't you feel a lot more openness and freedom here in this Sarvangasana after having done the Halasana variations? Then back up on Sarvangasana, and keep your left leg lengthening up toward the ceiling, and bring your right foot down halfway and then all the way to the floor. And bring that leg back up. Good. And then do the same thing on the other side. So last variation. Keep lifting up through that right leg. And then bring your leg all the way back up and come back into plow pose. Take your strap off. And then lower yourself all the way down. Off of your uh, lower down first. Then you slide off until your head and shoulders are off of your setup. And then people who are in legs up the wall pose, push yourself away from the wall now. We've got a few other poses to do. The first one is uh, what we've been doing the past two or three weeks after shoulders down, which is to slide a little bit more off of your setup. So just your sacrum is up on the setup. And then you have Jatara Parivartanasana, okay, which is the abdomen turning pose. And it too is actually really like another version of Parivartanasana. So let's do it with the knees bent first. So pull your leg in close to your torso, stretch your arms out. And then as you exhale, pull the abdomen in a little bit like, um, Ardha Navasana, but also again here the abdomen moves in the opposite direction of the legs. So as your legs move up and over toward your right armpit, your abdomen moves from right to left. Your ribs move from right to left and you keep your collarbone broad. And squeeze the legs together as you come back up. Exhale, pull the legs in a little bit more. And then keep pulling the knees up and in, kind of angling them toward your left armpit. You stay in a nice little tight ball and the abdomen moves from left to right, the ribs move from left to right, and keep your collarbones up. All right, and then bring your legs back to the center, straighten your legs up, pull your legs in, and then as you exhale with straight legs, to get them as straight and strong as you can, move your legs up and over toward the right. And as you do that, your abdomen moves from right to left, your ribs move from right to left, and keep your collarbones broad. And swing your legs back up to the center. Exhale, pull your legs in a little closer toward your torso, and then move your legs up and over. So eventually the knees, the legs, or the feet, and a hover right above the hand. And then pull the legs in, bend the knees, roll to your side, and sit up. All right, so now we've got the fourth thing that's new in this sequence, and that is adding in some seated forward bends after doing our shoulder snap, which, as luck would have it, we have time to do. Not much, but plenty. Okay, so there are three of them that he introduces. 
And they're interesting to think about uh, just why he picks the ones he does yeah. and to look at in terms of the opening required in the hips. Yeah. So the first, get, get a strap for the first one. You'll probably need it for some pose called Mahamudra. So I find that fascinating that he starts with this one. Yeah. But Mahamudra likes, our, one of the reasons I think he does is Mahamudra likes Arvangasana. You bring your chin down to your chest for Jalandarabandha. So the Jalandarabandha part, I think is gonna come really well after the Sarvangasana. Okay, so take your right hand on the inside of your right knee and pull your leg up. In the foot position of Mahamudra, your right, right foot is on the inside of the left thigh. So the leg is basically doing a supine tree pose. Okay. Flex both of your feet and from the little toe side of the foot, draw up into the outer hip. All right, then, Put the strap on the foot. Yeah. And for Mahamudra, you do have to lean forward some. Yeah. But you don't want to lean forward so much that you can't roll those shoulders back. Yeah. So pull on the strap and lift your biceps up toward the ceiling. Lift your chest well. And as you exhale, bring your chin down to your chest. Yeah. This is the shape of the pose Mahamudra. But Mahamudra has some breathing patterns associated with it. And we'll do a couple of cycles. So you're going to exhale completely. Then on an inhalation, keeping your abdomen drawing in toward the spine and up a little bit, inhale your breath all the way up into the top chest. Hold the breath in your top chest for a second or two. Keep the chest well lifted. Release the abdominal grip. And exhale. Then do that one more time. So exhale completely. On an inhalation, inhale your, draw the abdomen in and up and continue that inhalation up into the top chest. Let the breath stay there. And keeping the chest well lifted, release the abdominal grip and exhale. Then raise your head up. Then stretch that leg out. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So bring your opposite leg up. And the leg position here is, just, is Baddha Kamasana. That and well, this tree pose really press your foot and your thigh into each other, and when you draw up from the little tone, the ad, that that gives you what's called ud, uh, mula vanda, hopefully. So your perineum is drawing in. Then Mahamudra also has udhyana vanda, that drawing in of the abdomen in and up, and it also has jalanaraba. <coughs> so it's called the great seal, <coughs> big one, ma. And it has all three of the bandhas. And the idea is that the bandhas seal the energy of the breath within the body and it just percolates around in the body. And it's, it's also very soothing for the brain. Okay, so that's the idea. We so have to build the shape of the pose first. And then the prana of the breath fills up the shape. Okay. All right. So shape of the pose, you've got your legs in the seated tree. Lift up through the little toe side of the foot. Put the strap on the ball of your foot. Or if you can, the full pose, you get your big toe with both fingers. But for most people, when they do that, the shoulders roll a little bit forward, myself included. So I'm just going to use some strap. But you do have to, in order to get, particularly the, the bond, the, the bond is right, you do have to move your torso a little bit pretty far forward. Okay? So it's not an upright pose. So get, get your torso moving forward. Okay? Now push your foot and your thigh into each other, feel the chest lift. Turn your biceps up toward the ceiling and feel the chest lift more. Keeping your chest well lifted, exhale and bring your chin down to your chest. And then this is the shape of the pose Maha Mudra. Having established the shape, exhale and push your foot and your thigh into each other to give yourself Mula Vanda. Then inhale your breath and draw the abdomen in and up on that inhalation, Uddiyana Vanda. Continue that lift all the way up into your top chest where you have Jalandara Vanda established. Hold the breath there for a couple of seconds. And keeping your chest well lifted, release your abdominal grip and exhale. And then if you can do, if you need to adjust your posture, adjust your posture, and then do one more. So you're gonna exhale. And on an inhalation, draw your abdomen in and up. Continue that inhalation all the way up into the top chest. Keep the chest well lifted and hold the breath there for a couple of cycles, not cycles, just seconds. And then release the abdominal grip, exhale, and then you raise your head up. Yeah. From what I can see, that actually looked pretty good. Yeah. 
So I, I think he puts it where he does. Again, like I said, because the Jalandara Banda comes so well after the Sarvangasana. And it also continues the idea of like the brain and the mind is continuing to draw inward like it does, like it starts doing in Sarvangasana. Okay, then the next seated for Ben that he has us do is Janushir Shasana. So Janushir Shasana requires a little bit more of the hips. Okay. So the knee goes a little bit back behind you and the foot uh, points. So the leg is more like a Virasana leg. If you need to sit on height for your buttocks to get lift in the spine, go ahead and do so. Okay. And so with Jalandara Banda, there has to be, I'm sorry, with Janushir Shasana, there's actually a little bit of that turn of the torso toward the front leg. So make a little hook with your hand and put it on your thigh okay. and externally rotate that Johnny Shearshaw's and the leg a little bit more, but turn your torso toward your straight leg. Okay. Then reach forward and get your foot or use a strap if you can't reach or just hold on to anywhere in your shin that you want to. Yeah, there's a nice concave back shape of all four bends. Okay, so do that one first. Then keeping that extension of the front body, you can exhale and pull forward Letting your elbows go out wide. Take a couple breaths here. See if you can extend a little bit further forward and let your elbows go out wide again. Then come back to the concave stage. Raise yourself up and stretch your legs out. All right, and then same thing on the second side. So take your left hand on the inside of the left knee. Move your leg out and back a little bit. Okay. The leg in that turn is going to turn the, the torso. The tendency of the torso is to go toward the bent leg. Okay. But you actually want to extend out over the front leg. So again, use your fingers to externally rotate the leg and push down a little bit. And you can lean your torso and turn it then toward your front leg. So you get that going to release just a little bit more. Okay. Then reach forward for your foot. Extend up through the sides of the torso. Do the nice concave back shape first. And then as you exhale, fold yourself forward. Let your elbows come out wide. Extend the torso toward your legs. Take a couple breaths. And can you extend forward on an inhalation a little bit more? And then exhale, pull yourself in more deeply. Inhale, extending the spine a little bit forward. Exhale, let yourself come in a little bit more deeply. Then come back up to the concave stage. Nice poses, everyone. Straighten both legs out. All right, and then the last one is uh, Paschimottanasana, all right? So, and then from Paschimottanasana, we're just gonna, after we do it, we're just gonna roll straight back into Shavasana, right? So if you knew you need support for your head or something else for your, to have a good Shavasana experience, have it nearby, right? And stretch both of your legs out. Join your big toes together and spread your other toes wide apart. Lift up from the little toe side of the foot into the outer hips and then reach forward. And you can get your big toes. That's one option of the grip. You can get your outer feet as another option of the grip. You can go over the tops of the feet. And some people might eventually even be able to interlace their hands in front of your feet, right? So all of those work as positions for the hands. So I do the concave, I'm gonna do my big toes. So concave back shape first, really make your legs strong. So push those tops of the feet down into the floor and feel the abdomen drawing in toward the spine. Then you're gonna exhale and keep your legs strong, bend your elbows out wide, let your trapezius release away from the neck. And then work with your breath here for a few cycles. As you inhale, make yourself taller and longer and extend forward. As you exhale, can you pull yourself down a little bit? So extending forward and then exhaling, pulling this breath in. Now at some point, you're just gonna probably reach your, your natural, your capacity for this point. Okay? And you can stop there, stay there for two, three cycles of breath. And then you may find that as you stay a little bit longer, you get a little bit more ability to go a little deeper into the pose. And then you can may find that that's what's gonna work for you. If you need to come up, reestablish in the concave stage, go ahead and do that. And then see if you can just come back down one more, one more 
little session, let's say 30 seconds more in flexion of Jamasana. Feel how nice it is on the back body, calming and soothing for the brain. And after Sarvangasana, starts the brain movement inward. And you just continue that even more with these forward bends. And then hopefully, when you come out of your Pashimachanasana, sit back up and roll yourself all the way to straight back into Shavasana. Hopefully that internalizing of the consciousness that started in the Sarvangasana, well, it started before, but let's say Sarvangasana is very much in pose that cultivates the involution of consciousness that continued through the seated forward bends. And now it should also have a nice resonance for the quality of your Shavasana. So maybe that there's just a different quality, maybe slightly more sattvic feeling, or maybe a lot more sattvic feeling than usual in your Shavasana. I mean, Shavasana is pretty sattvic activity usually, unless you just can't relax. Just notice what you notice. Now, we also did, you know, the new, other new thing today was headstand, so we've been doing it. And the other new thing was the back bends, right? So those work on opening the chest. This is a nicely balanced sequence in that we did some nice vigorous backward bending, belly down work where the back of the head is kind of extending and lifting up toward the ceiling. Right? And then we did these forward bends where the head and the brain is, we could say, moving in the opposite direction. So just taking stock of all of that to whatever degree you have the inclination to do. And just encoding that in your own consciousness. And then just be in your state of Shavasana. Let your eyes release into the back of your head. Let your tongue release away from the roof of your mouth. Unclench your jaw. Let the back of the throat release. Let the base of the throat release. The sides of the throat release. Let your ears drop forward. Completely relax the features of your face. Become quiet within. Or take a couple deeper breaths. Place your hands on your rib cage. Bend your knees. And roll over to your right side. And use your hands to press yourself back up. Sit up straight and tall. Lift your chest well. Close your eyes and fold your palms together. Yeah. Just take a moment here. Observe the effect that this particular practice, this new set of poses, has on you. In gratitude to the benefit you receive from your practice of yoga, in gratitude to the people you have the opportunity to learn and study and practice yoga with, and in gratitude to the lineage of Hatha Yoga itself, as practiced by BKS Iyengar, reaching back to the sages of India and down through a line of teachers and students to you here on the mat in Austin, Texas, in Paris, France, um, somewhere in, I think, Washington State for Laura. Then go forward and namaste, release. All right. Thank you.